making up the battery cable, or the positive battery cable anyway. Um, just trimmed the end, and just get your terminal, gauge where the end is, just trim it off, trim the plastic off, slide the end on, and then I'm going to heat it, and then put the solder in the back. That's the plan anyway. I'll just leave the heat shrink over the end like that. You're already done. Let's get a blower and shrink it. a little bit of convoluted tubing that was on the original one because it goes down past the crankcase and sits against the crankcase so I'm going to use that there but this bit's still a bit bare so I haven't got any any more of that and that's a bit big to go up through the hole so I'm going to cover it with some some more more braiding um, just up to about here somewhere so I can run a little bit more heat shrink tubing in red over the top of that to hold it there. And this is a bit of protection from abrasion. So I'm going to put that over the top. Somehow he says. So you know it swells up. It's quite clever actually. And you can just slide it on as far as you like. Take that bit off. And put it back down get it to where you want and slide it on so works out rather well so I'm going to use that there and there so I'll cut that about cut that about there somewhere I think and there somewhere The only thing I found with this is it's a little bit hard to judge how long you want it because when you push it on obviously it expands so the length gets shorter so you have to sort of be a bit overkill at first and you can trim it to where you want it at a later date. Um, bits off this is what happens when it just flares up when you flare it out you just get the ends start to unravel a bit but they're easy enough just to trim off right. I'll do for that I'm not 
want a little bit more of this, just enough to wrap that up. heat shrink can go a little bit rigid when it gets hard so if you want any bends or anything in it try and put them in it before it goes off and then it will stay the shape that you want it that comes off the starter and comes up to the battery like that and this little bit goes on there just add added protection There you go, plenty of red so you know it's red, you know it's a positive, but plenty of shielding as well, so that's how it's going to be. Well, I'll be moving the rocker arms, rocker arm assemblies, because I'm taking the side cover off mainly because I want to change these hoses because they're, they're hard and they go right down and they go up under here and you can't get to anything there's a factory installed clip which you can't get off but I'm also I've got the EMD covers here um, still haven't finished the other one polishing yet but I've also got the covers to go on here the rib cover to cover that and the sprocket cover um, so I'm going to take this off and I'm going to trim it down to match the cover um, and then the, the uh, forward sprocket cover goes on here but I'll have to make another mount for the uh, rear brake master cylinder um, not quite sure how that fits yet but supposedly it's all turning up tomorrow so I'm going to get on with this try and get this out and um, Trim it down, yeah. Right, you've got three smaller bolts here one there, one there, one there, and then over the other side, you've got two smaller Allen bolts that go in there and there. So take them out first, and then you've got the four rocker stud bolts there. should have done all this when I had the engine out I think but uh, you live and learn 
Voilà. I always check to see if these are any different length. If they are, then I mark them. But these aren't, these are all the same length. So it's not really a problem. They go back. This front one has been changed at some point because uh, it looks cleaner and newer than the other one. So I think it's been out at some point. There's just still some tension on this. Valve. I like to just release them slowly, go around until they're all loose. And less chance of distorting the case then. Sometimes they just pop off when you get the bolts undone. Because of the tension, sometimes they don't. Just give them a little tap with a hammer, rubber mallet, do you know what I'm saying, not a hammer. Oops, another chip on the front. bolts are actually two different sizes left and right the right hand ones are longer than the left so always make sure you keep them back in the right place Yeah, this one has been changed. It's got an aftermarket gasket on it. And actually, interestingly enough, it says rear head on it. If you can see that on there, maybe, maybe you can't. It says rear head, which is interesting because this is the front cylinder. So. It's a nice 
metal gasket. Hmm. That's interesting. On the other side, it says front cylinder. Oh, I suppose they're universal. Just got getting around the right way. All right. Well, that's interesting to know. And it's got a date on the head. February the 12th, 1999. Hmm. Right, now before I take the timing plate off, I've marked it. I've marked it in several places. One here, which is the adjuster hole. The both screws, I've marked it around the edge. And also put a line on the plate on the plate and the casing with a pencil to be more accurate. So I've got several marks to align it with. There you go, got the cover off. Now I can get to these oil lines and change these. The front one goes right up behind the engine mount. Um, but at least I can get to these ones and put new hoses on these. And then trim the cover down. Um, it's quite clean actually. But I thought there was a location hole here. Because there's a stud up here that locates. But that's not. The only locator is this, so I'm going to have to leave that boss in like some people do. As a locator, because you can't locate on the bolts. It's not really good enough. Especially as all the cams are in there as well. So I'm going to have to leave that one in. Um, cut around it. Hmm. Okay. Now some people may ask me why I'm cutting the side, the timing, uh, the cam cover down. Um, the reason being, I like the finned covers. Uh, I think it looks old school. Um, I love finned covers. Anything I can get, I'll have a finned cover. Um, but just putting a finned cover over the top of the filming case, it don't look right because you've got the extra metal hanging about. Um, so I'm gonna cut the cover down to the size of the fin cover and then the sprocket cover is another little fin cap cover that goes over the top. It looks like this there's, there's two separate units there and I think it looks more old school with the fin covers and the separation between the two because that side cover is definitely Sportster. Um, not that I'm trying to get away from Sportster, I love the Sportster engine. I think it's a fantastic little compact unit and it's quite light. Um, the, Wild, the Yamaha Wildstar I had before, um, beautiful engine really really torquey low down maximum torque about 2200 revs um, but it was so damn heavy and as I'm getting a bit older now it was a right bitch to push around when it was not running um, and the amount of avail availability of space I've got is another big factor um, I can't just get it out when I want to go around things and stuff like that and it's a right pain in the butt the Sportster is really, really light compared to that. Um, and again, the 12, okay, the Wild Style was 1600, loads of low down torque. The Sportster's 1200, nowhere near as much torque, um, probably half, to be fair. Um, but it's plenty for me. I'm not a boy racer, I don't go tear arsing around. It's just a nice, easy bike to handle. Um, but I still like the old school look, so that's why I'm doing the fin covers. And they're supposed to be turning up in the post tomorrow, which will be good if they do. And then I can match the cover up, tr trim the can cover back, put it all back together, make a bracket up for the master cylinder because the, the rear brake master cylinder is attached to the um, sprocket cover, as you well know, um, on the earlier models and the new finned cover doesn't allow any mounting points so I've got to make up a bracket that's going to support that on the 
sprocket cover. Um, hopefully it all fits, but I won't know until I get it and have a look around it. Um, and then I can put it all back together. Then I can test the wiring, which I haven't done yet. Um, and then once I've got the aura lines on, which I'm going to do before I put it back together, um, hopefully I can get flush the tank out, because the tank's new, so it's been standing around for a while, flush that out, um, and then fire it up, hopefully, because everything else after this can go back on. Then it'll be running. So, we'll see. Well, no going back now. Mm -hmm. well, I've got the cam cover trimmed up. It's um it was a bit of a nightmare but we got there in the end. I was going to paint this back bit, but I decided to polish it instead, so that'll work. And the front pulley cover turned up, which is a bit weird because it's got a, a big hole here. Don't know why that's there. Um, I'm quite sure why that's there, but there doesn't seem to be a need for it. Um, unless they put the oil lines up there, but. It's too close to the chain, so I don't know. Um, there's some bolts that, that go in here. And this is a this bit is a dummy cover on this bit. So I'm not quite sure whether to polish that bit and leave that bit, or vice versa. Don't know. Not sure yet. But the cam case cover is a bit a bit worse to fit really because um, you've got all this all this flashing that's still here I thought this would have been all cleaned up nicely but it's not this is all the, the flashing this should be flat it shouldn't have that ridge on the back of it like that oh crap I started start to tidy up around here and um, now I'm gonna polish the top Polish it all really as much as I can. Again, like the rocker cover is going to leave right in the middle of here. Polish the fins and the tops. But there's some weird, weird markings going on in it. There's a big, big hole in the cast in there. That ain't going to disappear. So yeah, it's um, it doesn't fit really, really well at the bottom. This really should have come out further, I think. But hey ho, it is what it is. And um, I shall make it fit one way or the other. Right. As you can see, it, it's short of the cover, and you can't cut this back any further because that's where the gasket goes. So, there you go. That'll have to be where it is. But, uh, get back any further sorry it's about as far as I can get back but you can see the idea well we're getting there we've got the covers polished in the end well as much as I want to do your fingers get a bit red raw as much as you can and um, yeah I've still got to work out where the master cylinder goes because it's where it normally mounts doesn't exist on this cover which is a bit of a pain but there you go another job and uh what the covers I'm just doing the doing the other one now putting that on should have done this before actually the reason why I took the, the rockers off obviously is to get the cam cover off to trim it down so I can get to the oil lines and everything under there which will be fine now and the other rock covers there. We need to go. Well, finally got the rock covers on. 
after a bit of a pain doing the, the nuts up. I couldn't really get to that one down that side. So I've done it up with a spanner. So it should be fine. If it leaks, I'll have to have another look at it. But it seems to be fine at the moment. Tight enough. The covers. And uh, yeah. A few scratches on the paint, but hey ho, that's life. Made the bracket for the, for the master cylinder. The space is on there. The bracket goes on there like that. It's double sided because this back face then fits against that. Drilled and tap a hole in here. So this bolt. That bolt holds the bracket, this one holds the master cylinder and the bracket because it goes right through and bolts into the aluminium. The other one just supports the back of the master cylinder. And that sits on there. Right. One little tip I will say, whenever you're tapping something, I've always found it difficult to start the tab off and keep it straight um, especially if it's not that thick you, you can tend to tap the hole a bit a bit pissed so a little trick I learned from an old engineer most people have got a got a pillar drill so what you do you put your piece in the pillar drill make sure it's flat and if you haven't got high speed which most people don't because they buy the cheap stuff you can literally feed it in with your hand and that will give you providing you're obviously your table's level that will put the tap directly perpendicular to the face so it would be 90 degrees to the face so all you do is feed that down don't turn the drill on just put it down and hand tap it down until you've got a nice good bite and a fair depth and then you can take it out then to finish off with a, with a hand tap because it will be straight then you can just run it straight down through so yeah little tap, tip there um, this should all go on today should fit perfectly fine um, then all I've got to do is put the thing on and get round to trying to clean this damn oil tank out because it's rusty and I can't seem to clean it I put loads of stuff in it all the normal de-rust stuff um, white vinegar white vinegar is really good for it but the trouble is what I found is you can't use the normal stuff because it's inside a tank so you can't get to it to clean it afterwards normally if you put stuff in a de-rust solution or whatever white vinegar all sorts of stuff um, you can wire brush it afterwards and clean it up but the problem is with that you can't get inside the damn tank so I'm trying some other stuff bits and pieces now and I'll let you know if it works or I might have to just take the top off the tank and get in it that way uh, a bit drastic but it's got to be clean so I don't know yet
Hmm. There are three options really. Um, cut it, weld a bit in, or to turn this end down and re-thread it, or machine the flat side back into it at a shorter distance. And well, as I had the mill, and I haven't got a lathe to turn that end down, so that was going to be hard work. Um, but I've got a mill so I can machine flats, so that's what I've done. I'll drill a hole in there, and then that should be the rear master cylinder sorted. <laughs> 